Welcome viewers. In this video, we are going to look idea of substation equipment structures. In this video, we will be discussing about the equipment and structure types, comparison between the lattice and welder type, which are the major primary equipment structure types. And in the third, we will be looking in the design steps for equipment structures, or it can be called it as a small design philosophy. And followed by in the next video, we will be start working with the support structure design. So we can start with the simple PI that is post insulator support structure for single phase. So now let look into that idea of a substation equipment structures. So when coming to the equipment and the structure type when it is coming for a structure type there are only three types of structures in equipment support which are as per the connection type first one is welded in this welded cold or hot rolled in terms of cold rolled we can call it as chs is a circular hollow section shs is a square hollow section rhs is a rectangular hollow section so these three are considered as a cold form and hot roll we can call it as like H sections, U profile, channel section, I sections. So these are called it as hot roll based upon the manufacturing technique which are used for the steel profile we can call it as hot roll and cold roll. So Welded type is nothing but a square hollow section or circular hollow section to be welded at the top and bottom to become a rigid support for equipment. Second one is a lattice support structure. So in this, all the four legs which are made up of angle section or UPN or channel section to be connected with the diagonal bracings or sometimes uh, horizontal bracings connected with the bold. So this kind of lattice support structures is like a flexible support structure. Next one is a semi welded. You can see in this circuit breaker drawing where equipment and the structure to be manufactured and designed and supply by the equipment manufacturer itself. So here you can see for the transportation purpose, two legs are connected with the welded pattern plate. Opposite of the same two legs also to be connected with the pattern plate. So that this two set like a frame can be largest can be transported to site where in the site, this diagonal bracing can be connected or assembled at the site. So that this transportation and assembling at the site is very easy. So these are the three types of connection of a support structure. Next we come to that type of equipment. There are various equipment which may not be listed here also. So these are depends upon their functionality. These are classified. So here you can see the circuit breaker which is to break the circuit while doing any maintenance or if find any defect in the equipment in the system it will break. Next one is a CT is a current transformer. This equipment is to measure the current flow in a system. BT is a transformer type of equipment in this voltage to be measured in a system. Disconnector is a temporary disconnecting or switching off or switching on the substation system. Surge arrester is to arrest the lightning or any false surge which is going to happen in the substation area due to the external environmental effects. PA is not a special equipment, it is just a support, insulated support. Reactor and capacitor bank are mostly applicable for the compensation or quality solution of power. 
CSC is a cable ceiling end where there is a terminal point between the overhead line and the ground cable trench. This cable ceiling end is applicable. Wave trap is to arrest the waves, unwanted waves through telecommunications or any intra internet or any communications cables or communication network system is going to disturb with the substation system. So this kind of wave trap will do its function to trap the waves. So these are the major equipment and the classification of equipment support structures. Next, we will do some comparison between the lattice and the welded structure. So in this table, you can see three columns. First one is a scenario. Second one is a lattice type. According to the scenario, we will classify that. We will define what is the required as per the lattice and for the welded, is a third column. The first scenario, it is a hard deep galvanization. For lattice support structure, hard deep galvanization can be a perfect coverage. So it will cover the entire structural surface. And in terms of welded, if the welded structure is done with the hollow profiles, for example, circular hollow, square hollow or rectangular hollow, then we need to provide holes to drain out the hard deep galvanization sink. For that, we need to provide holes in the bottom and the top mounting plate or even in the sides of the hollow profiles. In case of hard rolled sections like H sections, H profile, UPN or I, I beam or even angle sections, if it is used for welded, this hard deep galvanization is not a problem. And coming to weight, generally that uh, lattice are less weight compared to welded. Assembly, site assembly is required in case of lattice. Even some of the project sites, they don't prefer for site assembly. Even this lattice also will get assembled in factory and delivered to site. But in welded case, most of the assembly parts should be welded at the factory because after welding this only, they used to do the hard deep galvanization. So while sending to site, all the hard deep galvanization process to be completed. So for that, assembly should be done in factory for welded type of structures. Next, coming to connection, mainly the lattice support structures are by bolted connections. In welded support, mainly it is welded because in some of the fixing point like earthing, earth box fixing and operation box fixing or some tie members fixing, we need some bolted connections. So that's why we are calling this as a mainly welded connections. And in the lattice support, it is mainly bolted because this base plate to be connected with the angle member, which is subject to some weld part. So we can call it as mainly welded, mainly bolted instead of wholly bolted or wholly welded in welded structures. Next one is frames. This frames means for lattice, it is connected with the bracings to main legs. In case of welded, it is a vertical members, the movement and buckling which are subject to these vertical members uh, to the external loads. Boundary condition if you are talking about is we need to provide a simply supported or hinged at the base of the structure. For welded, we need to give a fixed or movement resisting support conditions. Member loads are subject to axial tension or compression in terms of lattice structures. Also, it's also subject to shear or horizontal forces. In terms of welded structures, it, these are subjected to both tension and compression and shear and also a movement. Only difference in member loads is uh, here in welded movement is added. But in case of lattice, there is no movement because we are going to use only the angular member which are subject to only axial forces. Wind drag comparatively high in lattice structures because of this open structure, there will be a high, sol there will be less solidity ratio so that the drag coefficient will be higher. But in case of welded as it is closed, for example, if it is a circular hollow section, we need to consider only two-third of the exposed area. So the effect of wind drag is less in welded profile. 
because that drag coefficient for plane plate we used to consider 2 but in case of lesser solid ratio in lattice type of structures the drag coefficient will more than 2 so that is why that wind drag is high in the lattice support structure next coming to seismic as the lattice structure is having a flexible connection or having more ductility effect the seismic impact will will be a less compared to welded but in welded case the connections are rigid due to its rigidness and rigidness and heavy weight compared to lattice the seismic effect will be higher and coming to splicing connection in that splicing that is required only simple axial and shear connection but for welded structure we need to provide movement and bearing connections installation is easy in the lattice because it require only less crane usage or even no no need of any crane because all the parts uh, structural parts will be very small and simpler that can be able to do it in site by fabrication with the bolts but welded part which are required crane or lifting equipment at site because the whole entire assembly of welded structures to be done at a factory and sent to site after galvanization so that lifting and placing of this welded structures in foundation seems to be a complicate compared to lattice Next is design steps for equipment structures. First one is input. In that equipment manufacture drawing is required to find the equipment height and the diameter of the equipment and what are the parts which are subject to exposure of wind and the weight of the equipment. All those information we can able to get from the equipment drawing. Second is second input is a substation plan. In this substation plan, we can able to identify the purpose of the equipment structure which we are going to design. Say for example, CT, VT, disconnector or what kind of equipment to be mount over the equipment support structure which we are going to design. And also the face to face distance of the equipment in case of three phase structure, this input is required. The conductor type and connecting equipment the span of the conductor we can able to get from the substation plan the section or section input will give you the height of the structures and the standard code which is another input required for design standard code comprises of loads materials to be followed and design steps or a design consideration to be followed for as per the standards the standard means like the British, European, Russian, American or any country standards like Indian, Philippines, Argentina. So this standards code is required for design of uh, equipment support structure. Primary loads, coming to the primary loads, sulfate of equipment conductor structure to be considered and conductor loads is a electromechanical loads like string, a conductor string tension and short circuit forces these two forces to be calculated by the electromechanical engineer environmental loads such as wind ice snow seismic temperature fire all those things need to be considered as per the requirement of the project specification maintenance load generally these maintenance loads is applicable for the uh, workmanship or any maintenance engineer who used to climb on the structure and work with the kit or tools for any maintenance or repairing or any operational requirement so for that we need to consider a weight like 150 kg or 1.5 kn or 1000 or 100 kg or 1 kn as per the standard codes and the technical specification requirement of the project we need to consider this maintenance loads Next one is load combination. There are three categories of load combination while doing the equipment support structures. One is a serviceability load or limit state method. This is serviceability limit state SLS. This limit state of load combinations is required for deflection check of any structural members. Next one is ultimate limit state. 
this ultimate limit state used to have some load factor which are increasing load factor this load combination to be used for member design and also mounting plate and base plate uh, design third one is accidental combinations so this also we need to consider for member design and uh, base plate mounting plate designs also for connection designs this ultimate limit state and uh, accidental combination to be considered accidental load combination is nothing but earthquake and uh, seismic loads to be considered which are a uh, short term loads say for example seismic will have some uh, time period of less than 12 seconds whereas in uh, short circuit force used to have 1 or 3 second so these two are very short uh, short term loads so that we need to consider in accidental combinations coming to the analysis part in this analysis part either if you are doing manual with 2d analysis or using some 3d software there are two steps to be followed in analysis stage one is finding the external loads and the load combinations after that we need to distribute this uh, external loads to member loads or member force and the connection forces in order to design the member and connections so this is a first step we need to do in analysis second one is slenderness check because this equipment support structures are generally used to have impact by a compression and the buckling loads buckling so this compression and buckling we need to check through slenderness if the structural members are having a enough slenderness then the structural member can able to bear the compression or bending so this two steps we need to do one is the slenderness and another one is force distribution from the external force to the member and connections so these two steps we need to do in analysis so that can be either by 2d manual or 3d software after completing this analysis part we need to go for design of members so in the right hand side you can see a picture with the equipment support structure where the equipment is mounting over that so the vertical part we need to design the vertical part here showing a welded type of structure whereas having a circular hollow section profile is a member here so this member is a subject to compression tension shear and the bending moment next we need to do the design of connections of course the connections means it is a weld at the base plate and the weld at the mounting plate that is one type of connections here in uh, welded uh, structures but in terms of lattice structures the bolt connections of bracing to the main leg we need to consider also the splicing if the height of the main leg is more than the actual available size of the members we need to do some splice connections so that connections also covered under this design of connections so that too we need to do then next one is a mounting plate the pink color line which is showing at the top of the structure which is a mounting plate where the equipment to be mounted in that we need to design this mounting plate and find the thickness required for the mounting and the stiffener plates which are required when if it is going beyond the structure uh, uh, the projections the cantilever distance if more in the mounting plate then there we need some a stiffer plate also so along with that we need to design the weld connection also next one is design of base plate so the design of base plate you can see that blown up view of the foundation pedestal and the base plate in that you can also see some stiffener plate so the connection between the base plate and the stiffener plate to be designed the connection is welded here so the here also we need to define the base plate size in terms of width and length also the thickness to be designed here that base plate size is depends upon the bearing pressure which is transferred to the foundation through anchor bolt and the support structures and uh, we need to check the thickness with the combined shear and tension next and final one is anchor bolt which is a connector 
between the structure and the foundation sometimes this we need to design in a structure some times we need to design along with the foundation but in order to arrive the diameter of the hole at the base plate we need to calculate the at least a minimum diameter required for the support structure so that the base plate can be made with the hole for diameter also diameter of the anchor bolt in calculating the embedment length of the anchor bolt anyway that we can cover in uh, foundation design so these are the design steps for equipment structures in next video maybe in within a short period we will do some simple 400 kv post insulator single phase equipment support structure with the european standard thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates thank you